Good morning. It's 7 a.m. at the lake. Squirrels and chipmunks are running around. It's peaceful and calm. And in six hours, it's going to be utter chaos. Utter chaos. We don't have a parking spot left. Um, but I think I'm ready for it. Going with a positive tone today. There's a huge volume of people in here, and I have to say, there's a bit of trash, you know, trash items here or there. More things that blow away from people than things that were carelessly thrown. Um, the dumpsters are full. We've got another day to go before pickup, and the dumpsters are dead full. Not sure what to think about that. It's just nice to take a minute before it all goes goes crazy again today it's a beautiful day and i was inside my airstream all warm and i've gone with short sleeves today and i may have jumped the season a little bit even though it is um july i uh i'm cold still <laughs> um but let me explain to you what we tend to do and how we do it Every day I take a lap around the campground and I reset all of my reservation placards with a parking pass and the name and the check-in and check-out dates. About twice a week, I get a printout for all the online reservations. And so I don't get a new one of those every day and that can make um, resetting things a little bit tricky. Uh, we don't always have the current reservations or cancellations Occasionally, we have to fly by the seat of our pants and just figure things out on the go. That's a vault toilet. It's one of several that we deal with and manage and maintain. And I'll tell you more about them in a minute. After I take my first lap and I set out all of the incoming reservations, I go on another lap and I pick up litter and check the sites make sure fires weren't left burning. And then I, I flip the placards over so they say one night only for anywhere that there's no reservation incoming. And what that does is it allows people to drive in and just post up, start setting up, and they know they're usually good there for a night. Occasionally we have paperwork errors, but not too often. The system, it's flawed, but it works pretty well actually. Now, I could in theory do this all in one lap, but I find I make less clerical errors. I don't get distracted as easily because, you know, when you're the camp host, people are constantly coming up to you asking you questions about hikes or the bathrooms or can I sell firewood or what time is check out and check in and all of these details, do I, they need to pay for our day use and all of that. So we tend to do it in bite-sized chunks so that if we get distracted, it's not too overwhelming and we don't lose our place, making it so that we have um, reservation errors when possible. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but you know, anything we can do to make things easier to avoid any sort of conflict um, is a win. Once I get my campground reset, then it's time to put on boots because you don't clean bathrooms in sandals. Mm. Rhododendrons are all butted out. It's starting to pop. It's July. Everybody's saying that summer here doesn't start until after the 4th of July. I believe it. Do you do that? Oh, sure, sure. Are you guys headed to Frog Lake? Well, we took the little trail to it, but when we got to the Y in the roads, we didn't know where the trail actually went. <laughs> Yeah, we got horses headed to the lake. I just talked to them for a minute. That was awesome. Just had three horses come in, going to Frog Lake through the day's checkpoint. Well, it's the next day and I've gone with sleeves today, which is a much better choice, but I also got hung up on a different project, which I will share with you guys later. All kinds of bad decisions happening over here. Um, but let's talk about the anatomy of a vault toilet. Most people think a vault toilet is just a terrifying hole, and in some sense, they're not wrong. But they are actually engineered, and um, using them a certain way makes 
everything so much better. So let's talk about it. You can see where I've cleaned up graffiti with brown paint. I don't know why people want to carve their names into stuff. It's not, it's not awesome. But anyway, the first thing I do is I knock. All right, this is called the riser or commode. These hatches at the back are where you can have a company come and vacuum pump out all of the waste. And these are the vent chimney stacks. What I do is I spray down the inside and the outside of the riser. Then I get a brush and I scrub it clean and then I rinse it with a pump sprayer um, that is provided by the company. They're actually engineered to um, vent out of the chimney stacks. So when you leave the riser seat open, because you don't wanna to touch it or you forget, what you're doing is allowing all of the smells to burp into the actual bathroom stall instead of out the chimney. Now you'll find that there are odors. It is a vault toilet, it is a bathroom. Um, but when you close the lid on the toilet, it helps keep wildlife and bugs out. Now, seasonally, there will be some fly hatch out because that's just how these things work. And we use fly strips to make the vault toilet a more pleasant experience. But you could probably imagine being a chipmunk or a bird and getting stuck in an open vault toilet and what that really means. Ooh. All right, so I've replaced the trash bag, restocked my toilet paper, made sure my fly papers are still where they're supposed to be. I've mopped the floor, it's now drying. I've cleaned my riser. And the last step in this process is for me to WD-40 the inside of the riser to help everything sort of slide um, off of it. Then I close everything up and I hope that the vent stacks do their job. I've actually had somebody tell me that we have the cleanest bathrooms they've ever seen. One guy was like, this is cleaner than my bathroom at home. And my suggestion was he should buy some scrubbing bubbles because dude, it's still a hole. However, um, it's nice to see that people actually appreciate how hard we work um, to get this, you know, tolerable, I guess. Um, I do believe that this one needs to be pumped out. People keep complaining about it, but I'm gonna WD the riser and I'm not gonna film that because I don't keep my phone out while I'm gloved up. Additionally, I don't want my phone at risk of falling into the pit of sadness. I use these rocks to prop the doors. I don't understand why, but they keep getting stolen, thrown in the woods, kicked away, but I need them. Loaded all my supplies back into the truck and I use hand sanitizer, which I need to get refilled because there's no water or hand sani in any of the vaults. So um, you should know that going in. But one of the key takeaways here is that vaults are actually engineered and they're engineered to work in a certain way. And when people don't know how to use them or actually just um, are too afraid, um, that's when things tend to go sideways. Update, we caught a guy stealing a door rock. He was walking away with it. We're not entirely sure why, but we um, traded it for a generous couple pumps of hand sanitizer. And we pointed out that's our bathroom pit toilet doorstop. He kind of got the idea and took the hand sanitizer, handed the rock back. I have two more in the campground and then I have the day use ones as well. You can see that I'm in the Tundra and we use our, our personal vehicle. Uh, there's no golf carts or anything at this time uh, for the company that we work for. So we use our own vehicle to go around the campground. What we've realized is that the truck never warms up and it all it's an on and off and on and off slow roll kind of situation. We get terrible gas miles. To get gas that's actually cheaper, we have to drive down the mountain. So we try to do that when we go grocery shopping. Because every time we go down, all the way down the mountain, it costs us about $25 in fuel of round trip. So I have come up with an idea. Sitting here chit-chatting like a lady of leisure. Let me go around the campground um, to buy an electric vehicle, like an electric scooter or an e-bike or whatever. But when I looked at the weights of the e-bikes, we really don't want to be adding that kind of payload. Um, so instead, I've been talking to this kid at one of the local colleges and he has a one wheel 
electric um, skateboard. Ooh, that's a tight squeeze. Um, those are ridiculously expensive, but his has a flat tire and uh, he got his from for free. So he's not looking to recoup his obscene amount of um, financial investment. So he's willing to sell it to me for what I would consider a good deal plus $50 extra for all of his accessories. Now we've been working um, or salary at our campground, but we've been working at other campgrounds and we have requested hourly pay for that to help compensate and fill in and plug in some holes for us financially. So I'm going to sneak off later today and I'm going to buy that um, one wheel and uh, it's an electric skateboard basically. And um, hopefully that will start to give us auxiliary transportation when we're separate or just to tool around. Plus it's just fun, right? Like it's just fun. Um, anyway, more on that later. Two more toilets in the campground. Woo! Do you love it? I'm not in uniform today. I'm wearing pink plaid. Um, which means I won't be collecting any payment. Um, what I, I was walking through the woods with my bucket and my cleaning supplies and I was cleaning a bathroom and, um, a woman, um, was like, I'm not paying you. You're not wearing forest service green. And to be fair, that's true. Although I don't clean these bathrooms for free. So, you know, logically, um, I think she just didn't want to pay, but, and that's fine. That's fine. So any day that I'm collecting payment, I'm usually wearing green. All right, so it's the next day. There's been a wardrobe change. I'm wearing Forest Service colors because I am collecting money today. Um, it has gotten suddenly out of nowhere very warm here in Oregon, and people are racing up the mountain to the elevation, and we have to collect a $10 day use fee <clears throat> for each car. Uh, the thing about day use is, um, Everybody thinks that they have the correct pass to get in without paying, and almost nobody does. Um, the other thing is that this is federal land, and while America the Beautiful works in a lot of places, if you read the fine print on your card, concessionaires, so the company that pays me to clean all of these toilets, um, which you guys saw yesterday, the company that pays me to clean all of these toilets doesn't have to accept America the Beautiful. Um, and I get yelled at a lot when we're collecting for day use. Um, it's always been a special use area. There's what they call an Iron Ranger, but I'm gonna show that to you in a little bit when I go um, down to the boat launch area. Anything with infrastructure, boat launches, that kind of stuff. The Forest Service has often had self-pay stations. We definitely get people that say that they've been coming here for 42 years and have never paid. And apparently the Iron Ranger to self-pay has been here since some people say like 1932. There's people who clearly remember it personally from the 80s. You know, people just think there's a reason they don't have to pay. I'm not staying that long. I... One of the things we've definitely encountered is a lack of cash in our campground day use and wood sales. Um, people want to <laughs> Venmo me personally and we can't do that. Um, there's really limited um, cell phone signal up here and so uh, we've found that we, in order to upload our videos and do eBay, we actually have to leave the campground and go and hunt for signal. And some people are like, oh, just turn on Starlink. Well, we carry a Starlink system, but the tree coverage makes it so spotty that it wouldn't really be worth the $150. I would be better off using that money in my gas tank driving to go get um, good cellular. So if you're gonna be up on the mountain, I would highly suggest that you have cash in hand. I'm flying solo today. Andrew's been called to another lake that is short staffed. So let's get to my day. Come on. Let's talk about power management. Our current power, power management solution is us running our generator, which we carry um, for moments like this. I always feel guilty with the tenters. I try to be really respectful and not run it late at night. But last night we got back one of us had accidentally left the outlets on all day, inverting 
Well, we were away and we came back and there was no power. So I did have to run it in the evening when people are trying to put their kids to bed, not outside of quiet hours or anything, but I, I always feel a little guilty, especially because we at our campground are predominantly tenters. Um, those are the customers that we typically have. The roof solar isn't really gaining for us. We can't really move our trailer to the um, to the sunniest spot because of the, the sap tar pitch scenario that we're dealing with. And then the other thing is, is when I deploy my panels, my ground panels, they also get dripped on and are sticky and take maintenance. Additionally, chasing the sunspot around, like I really just don't have very much time for that during the day. And cost benefit analysis in order to do my job and not be all over the place in the campground, I really just have to run the generator once or twice a week. And that's just how that is for us right now. And maybe that'll change if we can come up with another solution. But at this time, the generator is the um, number one solution for power for us. All right, I have keys. I don't need my walkie because Andrew's not here. I have my phone, my bag. I need rubber gloves. I need some cleaning supplies. I need a rake. More on that in a minute and a shovel, possibly. Let's get to it. Nope. Ooh, brisk. Let's try that again. Ooh. Much better. I'm running the generator. I always feel bad about it, but it is what it is. Oh, how lovely. Someone left me a book clipped to my post. Isn't that awesome? I'll put it away and read it later. So fire rings, uh, we are approaching the fire ban. So I'm putting out like tiny little flags. 10 days ago, it was cool and damp. And then about two weeks later, the fire ban is on um, and well, basically underway. We've been told it's coming and um, I need to clean them out. People put trash and fruit and cigarette butts and like hamburgers and all kinds of stuff. You'd be astonished what you find in a fire pit. Um, what's interesting is that it's just litter. We find fruit and, you know, compostables too. And the thing is, is it's not gonna compost before the next guest arrives, which means that somebody has to clean that out. That somebody, in this case, is me. So I'm gonna get started. So here's a before. I've got my little flag in there because the fire ban is coming. And I'll show you an after. Coffee, cakes, peppers, towels, spoons. I don't even know what that is. Okay. I'm gonna grab that bucket. Okay. No idea what this guy's thinking here. There's a million places to park that don't block a um, forest service road. It's not a you know, smooth road, but people do come down it. Uh, Forest Service fire trucks come down it. And that he's like right in the middle of the opening. Not sure what he's thinking. So Shauna and I are out here taking a couple night photography shots. And I realized that none of this video is useful, but um, I thought I'd just narrate briefly so we can show you a couple of pictures we took. <laughs> it's um, It's been fun. So there's this hysterical thing that keeps happening and we can't really film it, but basically every time Shauna does a lap around the campground, she winds up collecting like the Pied Piper, a, a herd of children. And they all want to tell her about their boo-boos and show her their bike and um, have a contest about their boo-boos. And it just, it just, it happens every time. And I don't know what it is, but it just, you can sort of see the, see the herd kind of forming when she takes a lap around the campground. Within the realm of camp hosting, it seems that there is a lot of variety in the kinds of jobs and the scope of work. And you could have something that is very casual and very part-time. Uh, we work full-time and look for full-time um, because that's what we need. And the hunt for our next opportunity begins again very soon.